<laughs> We're here in a Missouri Botanical Garden basement at a herbarium here with my friend Dr. Peter Bernhardt, who studies flora morphology and pollination syndromes of orchids, especially. You have quite a few things. Anyway, we're here. I was in Nuevo Leon last month. I had to check on uh, some uh, gene, species in the genus Malacomalis, which is Rosaceae, and uh, very little observed, very, very seldom observed on iNaturals. Not a lot of photos online, so we came here. And that's what we're checking out. We see we get the rosaceae, the rose family stacks behind us. Malacomales, these are really cool shrubs to trees that are common in, in the highlands of Mexico. So we're going to take this opportunity to, you know, show you what a good herbarium label looks like and also uh, physically threaten those who don't make good herbarium labels. You know, we're going to come, we're going to put beef bullion in your shower, uh, in, in your shower faucets. We're going to put, put melted cheese in your shoes. We'll do all kinds of sick shit. I can really go down a wormhole with this. I'm good at revenge. Let's look at what a, let's check out what a good label. Okay, so we're, we're digitizing. I'm digitizing specimens. I got the speed light out here. So we're in the genus Malacomales. Okay, we got Lyanothamnus. We'll get to this later. Really cool genus of trees. He's just on the channel on today, but let's look at this. Okay, we're going to take these specimens off. We're looking at this, this specimen exactly, because this is the, this is a wonderful label right there look at that look so this is, is malacomales uh, nervosa and this was collected in uh, Oaxaca and that's what a good label looks like see got all the different species that grows with good description of habitat uh, we got elevation on there GPS uh, you know this is what this is what you need to do it's different salvia species you got a little lazy with the salvia species rocky soil mm -hmm. right uh, with no more no organic material <laughs> Shrub to 1.3 meters uh, with uh, frutos, what's rojizos? I don't know that one. I'm going to assume it means something reddish. Re yeah, that's what I'm guessing. So, but, so that's a good one. And now would you describe what a, what does a lousy herbarium label look like? Like just something that you see and it makes you mad. Uh, a lousy herbarium label would have to be the name of the plant, the collection in the collection uh, number, and just the country, right? Not, no elevation, no no description of habitat. No, nope. no, nope. no, no, no other uh, you know affinities, floristic affinities. That's nope. It's some bullshit, mm -hmm. right? What does it make you? How does it make you feel when you see that? Tell me about the Darwin specimen. You just mentioned the Darwin. Darwin did it. If you go over to the uh, main herbarium, they have some really interesting historical specimens, and there is a pressed frond of an of an asplenium fern that Darwin collected and you go oh my goodness it's a Darwin collection and you look at the label and it's it just gives you the name of the fern and the country Chile which Darwin spelled C H I L I as Joey said to me earlier, I guess he was hungry. Maybe he was hungry, yeah. yeah. That's some real whack shit, though. That's that's sloppy. Why, mm -hmm. why do you think he did that? They had all the time in the world back then. Darwin was not tra was not uh, trained as a botanist. He picked it up going along. He had one botany professor who, um, uh, during the short time he was at university, and um, he was... Uh, uh, allowed to do certain uh, floral dissections, but he sort of learned to be a collector by collecting, and I'm sure he got he just better later it. on. He just fell into it, but he didn't know. He, he Maybe he was an early specimen. Maybe he didn't know what to do. He did make some very important collections. If you look at, at Hooker's book, The Flora Antarctica, he gives credit to Darwin for being the first to collect certain of uh, certain things in Tierra del Fuego, for example. But this is really important when you start listing other species in there, because then, right. you know, if I, there's there's plant species where if I see that name, I know the habitat already. Right. And I know the soil already. Right. I, I could tell you it's going to be limestone or volcanic or whatever. All right, let's move right along. Let's look at this Malacomales paniculata. So this is the, uh, there's only one of these. This is from Chiapas, only one of these in the herbarium. I just decessioned another one from Nuevo Leon. But see, this is, I mean, look at this. This is a 1985 specimen. And you could see the damn indumentum of tiny hairs on those leaves. And though this label, I mean, this label's, it's okay, right? It's missing some other descriptions of uh, dry dwarf oak and acacias. It's not bad, you know, but it's not this. This is like, you got a whole fucking plant list. 
mm. right here. This is impressive. But let's be honest, this is from a degraded uh, habitat. It says very specifically, cut over edge of roadside with, dwar with dry dwarf oak, acacias, in cultivation so yeah um, but but it's mexico they don't they don't you know fuck their land like we do in the united states mm -hmm. like we you know you roadside in the united states mm -hmm. means it's probably a garbage there's probably like a dollar general and a pawn shop and a billboard in there but <laughs> in mexico that doesn't mean anything but that leads me to another thing with my herbarium labels i'm going the extra mile not only am i putting in you know elevation description of habitat geology i'm going on full-on misanthropic rants against society to the point where the label is, you know, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and there's barely any room for the plant. You know, there I am slamming the consumer slum, <laughs> making fun of the American populace, the dumbing down of America, the loss of the importance of science, you know, the Sagan-esque dystopia we're moving into, how, you know, how it's time to leave. I really keep, I go down a wormhole with it, you know, to the point that it's starting to become a problem because there's not much room for the plant. Anyway, and so we go, let's move over here, Peter. Let's go check this one out. We got the... Uh, we got Lyonothamnus right here, which this is, this is, I mean, this is from 1896 from Blanche and Trask. What is Blanche Trask? Is Trask was, Trask was a, I think Trask was a button. There's a couple of plants named Traskii, but this is Lyonothamnus. You can see this is in rough shape. There's glue holding it together, but uh, Lyonothamnus is a really cool tree that grows in the Channel Islands. There's fossils up from the mainland, so the Channel Islands act like a refugia. Like a refugium, kind of for uh, for this plant and quite a few others. There's two different varieties, maybe two different species of Lyonothamus. But again, rosacea, these flowers would be white, and this would be these is, can be upwards of a 60 foot tall tree. You know, grows happy as a pig and shit in full sun, but in a maritime climate with lots of fog. And uh, probably when they were growing on the mainland in the Miocene, there was you know it was a, there, a wetter climate, milder, not as dry yet, right? When you know when did Western North America start drying out? What are we talking? Do you any idea? Is that Miocene? Uh, okay. I think okay. it's Miocene. I think it's roughly Miocene, right? Like when did the, the last Metasequoia forest? There were Metasequoia forests out west, like in Nevada, 12 million years ago. Mm -hmm. You could find the petrified stumps. But this is you know this is why we get. Why we, why we have a bear. So this is kind of a rough specimen, but let's look on this one collected in 1939. This is uh, 84 years old, and uh, or maybe give or take a few years. And look at the quality on that. You got that wonderful abaxial leaf surface with the white hairs. I mean, this, I said, wow, this is a this is a wonderful specimen. And, they, and glued, too. I wonder what that glue is made out of. That is impressive, man. What do you think of this one? Is there a step now? Just, you know, Rocky Ledges, San Clemente Island. Yeah, it's, it's not locally common anymore, probably. But that's important, you know, in, on, these, uh, on these sheets. Uh, someone needs to make, well, at the time of collection, someone needs to make some sort of statement about abundance of mm -hmm. them, and then you come back years later and That's just another, see what's happened. It's another important it's thing another, to note: it's, it's robust a, population, sparse population, getting right. fucked by the human tumor. It's all oh. important stuff. To you know. when I first learned to do uh, plan collections, I was always told if you just see one of them, you don't take it. Right. Yeah, that's the other thing. You don't collect if it's a small mm -hmm. population. Mm -hmm. You can maybe, you know, collect some leaf material for DNA, but right. that's, well, that's it. Now yeah. we have, we can do that. Right. When is this from? When is this? You see, the 1889. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Who was the collector? I can't I'm, see. I'm looking. Probably, well, look at, it, look at the ink. Again. Look at how the ink I bleeds. May. Beautiful. This is nice. Yep, I've done this before. You get some bark in there because the bark... Mm -hmm. You know, I did this with Lebocedrus. That's a beautiful, it's got a beautiful bark. It does. Bright red, too. These are gorgeous fucking trees. They're actually somewhat common in native horticulture in California now. And they do great in the setting, but in, the, in situ, you can only find them on the Channel Islands. 1973, that's the most recent collection, it seems like. Ironwood Gully. Oh, yeah, they call them Ironwoods. I forget. Okay, this is really, but this still, 1939, look at that. Ah, oh. I'm going to guess there's going to be larger uh, collections in herbaria in California. Yeah, there will be. At Berkeley. There, is yeah. It? I mean, this is this is not bad these, for these a Missouri. Are probably, these are these I I wouldn't be at all surprised are duplicates of 
Uh, yeah, uh, always collect collections. duplicates if it's a robust population. Yes. Always collect. But anyway, that's all we got. We'll have a nice time. We have, you guys go fuck yourself. Bye. You want to say anything, Peter? It's goodbye. Mm, yeah. No. Just, yeah. Okay. That is some of the scariest stuff I have seen in a long time. That is a bad. This is a this is a gateway. This is a gateway to some bad stuff. I think they're all the same cloud. Uh, the flowers are so pretty. Look at the thank. Look at the thanklemen. You like thanklemen? Oh, it's missing is some boxwoods. God, you mums. <coughs> so Ben here is growing some rare chylanthoid ferns from West Texas. So how would one go about growing out the Lena uh, Greggii? So we got these guys as a rhizome cutting, and we just took a tiny little tip of the rhizome, and we put it in a Ziploc bag with a bunch of sphagnum, kept it in the fridge for about a week, then after that, we put it in a mist chamber in sphagnum. And then eventually when it started putting out these little fronds, we moved it to soil and we just keep it well watered and then well draining mix. So just, just sphagnum in a bag with high humidity and you put it in the fridge because it likes chilly temperatures. Yep, seems to work for whatever reason. Uh... Yeah, so the well, yeah, what's the mix like? So you got, it's probably large grained organics and then a lot of perlite, you use yeah. a lot of perlite and pumice. Yeah. Would you do that same thing with this astrolepis too? Yep. What is that, Kochi census or it's wind a hammy eye? A wind hammy eye. Yeah. And then in the convergent evolution dungeon, we've got a, a number of euphorbia species uh, that have no relation to cacti, but certainly look like it. That's, there's a euphorbia mimicking pellicifera. Not really, it just looks like it. Convergent evolution. Euphorbia is mimicking some of those small uh, opuntioids or cylindropuntioids and uh, echinocereus. This is from Saudi Arabia. Our woody eye. Gypsum endemic Dorstenia. So I hear there's a lot of gypsum in the Horn of Africa. You know, I'm going to go to Ethiopia or Eritrea. Wild. Wild stuff. That might make it easier to the same area Yeah, too. not a cactus. Just, just looks like one. I'm not a cactus. I just play one on TV. Euphorbia columnaris. Look, it's just the job of the hut you form. Euphorbia turbiniformis. They had to graft that probably because it's too sensitive to rot, huh? What's what's sensitive about it? Why do they have to graft it? 